I acknowledge this was a failure of the Is Secret it not Service. prima facie that somebody has failed? A former president was sir, shot. Sir, this could have been our Texas School Book Depository. Secret Service leadership committed catastrophic security failures. Indeed, the worst security failures for the, for the Secret Service since 1981, since the attempted assassination of President Ronald Reagan. It is incumbent upon this committee to determine why those security failures happened. Just after the shooting, Secret Service put out an official statement from your spokesperson that says there's an untrue assertion that a member of the former president's team requested additional security resources and that those were rebuffed. This is absolutely false. In fact, we added protective resources and technology and capabilities as part of the increased campaign travel tempo. Was this tweet accurate? With respect to Butler, Pennsylvania, it is accurate, sir. It is accurate that the Trump team had not asked for additional security and had not been rebuffed. If you're talking about Butler, Pennsylvania, all assets requested were approved. If you're talking about the media reporting of assets requested, uh, there were times when assets were uh, unavailable and not able to be filled, and those gaps were staffed with state and local law enforcement tactical assets. So I, I'm reading from the Washington Post, July 20th, 2024. Secret Service said to have denied requests for more security at Trump events. The opening paragraph, top officials of the U.S. Secret Service repeatedly denied requests for additional resources and personnel sought by Donald Trump's security detail in the two years leading up to his attempted assassination, uh, according to four people familiar with the request. Is that right, that repeatedly the Trump detail asked for more resources and repeatedly Secret Service leadership turned that down? That, that is not accurate, Senator. Uh, assets are requested. There's a process that is made. Uh, and How many requests did the, did the Trump team or the Trump detail ask for? Uh, I can get you that number in a queue. You, you, don't know, you don't know now. So I can speak to the ones that reported in the Washington Post, and we can go through them if you like. But you don't know how many, how many requests there were. In general, how many requests since 2021 that the former Trump detail has made a request for assets? You've had two weeks. You had a spokesperson put something out that is false on its face. By the way, did you approve this statement when it went out? Uh, I, I don't know if I did or didn't, Senator. Has this I, spokesperson, is, is he still employed? Does he, he still have a job? He is still employed, Senator. So he lied on behalf of the Secret Service. He still has a job. Did your predecessor, the former director, did she approve this statement? Senator, uh, our comms team, they, they send out statements. Uh, they do deconflict them and they put them out. Did she approve this statement? Uh, I don't know if she did or did not, Senator. And you don't know if you did either? I, I don't recall re approving it, Senator. Will you commit to provide this committee in writing every written request for additional resources from the Trump campaign or the Trump detail and every response from Secret Service? Senator, I will commit to providing responses and getting you the information that you are seeking. Let me ask you something. Uh, and, and who makes the decision to deny those requests? Did you make that decision? Which requests? Are you talking about the ones that were in the Any Washington of them. Post? Yes. Uh, the process, sir, is that uh, a detail uh, will make a request for either staffing, technical assets, uh, that is handled between uh, the field office and the detail. It goes up to a logistics office uh, between our Okay, so there's a bureaucracy. Is there a decision maker? It's not a bureaucracy, it, Senator. Give me the it's a person process. that's the decision maker. Is there one? Uh, Senator, uh, it's a conversation. It's not just an absolute yay so, or nay. So let me tell you what I believe. I believe that the Secret Service leadership made a political decision to deny these requests. And I think the Biden administration has been suffused with partisan politics. Did the same person who denied the request for additional security to President Trump also repeatedly deny the request for security to Robert F. Kennedy Jr., whose father was murdered by an assassin and whose uncle was murdered by an assassin. Did the same person make that decision? Senator, what I will tell you is that Secret Service agents are not political. Okay, you're not and answering my question. But, but you know what? Leadership I'll get to your appointed answer, by the Senator, president leadership appointed to. by the president is political. I have a simple question, yes or no. Did the same person deny the Trump request that also denied the RFK request? That's a yes or no question. Uh, Senator, that is not a yes or no question. One, 
there is a process for a candidate nominee to receive protection. Is there, that does the is buck a stop bicameral, does that is the a buck bicameral stop bipartisan anywhere? process so, that the Hill it's participates. It's a bicameral bipartisan process. What camera? For a candidate, you, you for are a not candidate a Congress. You don't have a camera. Mr. Kennedy submitted a request that was referred over to the CPAC. Okay, you're refusing to answer the question. Let me ask, because the failures on that day were catastrophic. By the way, is it true that on the day of the of the Butler event that Secret Service transferred agent for President Trump to the First Lady? Uh, no, sir, that's not true. That's been widely reported. Yeah, it's not true. There was one airport agent that actually went on the manpower request for the Trump detail. They handled the arrival at the airport. What for is the, first the relative? Lady what was the relative the size of the Trump detail compared to the detail that is assigned to the President of the First Lady? Uh, Senator, the former president travels with a full shift, just what, like what, the president. What's the re so the exact same size? Is that your testimony that, that the, President Trump had the same size detail that President Biden has? On the day of in Butler, the agents surrounding him, it is the same number of agents surrounding the president today. There is a difference between a sitting president who also not only uh, hold, has hold on, you're using president in a way that is not clear. Is it your testimony that in Butler, Pennsylvania? Donald Trump had the same number of agents protecting him that Joe Biden has at a comparable event. I'm telling you the shift, the close protection shift surrounding. That's, That's a yes what or you no. asked me, Senator, and I'm trying to answer it. You, you are not answering it. Is it the same number of agents or not? Senator, there is a difference between the sitting president of the United States. Then what's the difference? The difference? 2X, 3X, 5X, National 10X? Command Authority to launch a nuclear strike, I, I, sir. I'm, there I'm are not other asked assets how many that more travel agents? with the president that sir, the former president sir, will you are not refusing get. To but answer the number straight. of Secret Service sir, agents stop protecting him. Stop, stop interrupting me. Go ahead, you Senator. You are refusing to answer clear and direct questions. I am asking the relative difference in the number of agents between those assigned to Donald Trump and those assigned to Joe Biden. I'm not asking why you assign more to Joe Biden. I'm asking, is the difference, is it 2X? Is it 3X? Is it 5X? Is it 10X? Senator, I will get you that number so you can see it with your own eyes. Why was President Trump allowed to take the stage at 6.02 p.m., exactly 17 minutes after multiple suspicious person reports were provided, uh, complete with photos and information suggesting that the assailant had a range finder, something that ordinary people don't use uh, in this kind of circumstance. Senator, again, it was suspicion, not weapon, or there was never communication of that there was an individual with a gun or threat or other bad intentions. How many suspicious person reports did you receive that day? Uh, I'll get back to you on the exact number, but there were other individuals that came to the attention of law enforcement that day. Would President Biden ever be allowed on stage under similar circumstances with an unresolved set of multiple suspicious person reports provided, including indicating that there was a range finder involved? Senator, I can tell you that uh, a suspicious person on the outer perimeter with local law enforcement attempting to locate um, is would happen, uh, but I would need more information as far as whether or not we would allow the president to go on or off. Again, for, for us, it comes down to weapon, uh, uh, a potential threat? Uh, is the individual carrying an IED? Is there a weapon? Is there some other factor that now ramps up our attention to let's, let's, let's hold off on this? If there were eight shell casings found next to the assailant's body, but he was neutralized after the first shot, where do those other shots come from? Where, where do the other shots go? As far as the assailant's yes. shooting? Yes. So did the assailant get out eight shots, or were those shell casings left from the day before? What, where did they come from? The shooter, uh, Senator, we believe fired eight rounds. Uh, we had the shooting reconstruction team go out there for a period of days and collect all that. So we have bullet holes, bullet fragmentation all taken back, and we're still putting together the um, trajectory and ballistic analysis, although we do have fragments of the bullets, and bullets have been con collected in the distance from the shooter's weapon. Gotcha, gotcha. It's my understanding there was a sniper team assigned to a window with complete overlook, complete view of the roof, the same rooftop, uh, the sloped roof, rooftop where the shots were fired. It's also my understanding, uh, according to some uh, whistleblower accounts, that that post was abandoned. What can you tell me about that? Why was it abandoned? So I saw that from uh, the Colonel's testimony, sir, and it's something that I've asked and our mission assurance is getting to the bottom of. And uh, there were two, two man, counter sniper teams from the locals that were in that 
AGR building. And so at some point they just left? That I, I, I can't, I, I don't have an answer for you on that center, but it seems to me that if even one of them left, there should have been remaining some additional eyes left in that building. Yeah, that seems like something that maybe should be one of the very first questions you address. I'm actually surprised that you don't know that already. And I, I, I'd, I'd ask that you submit to us in writing what you learn as soon as you learn it. Will you commit to that? Yes, sir. What can you tell me uh, about, let me, let me just state this this way. Multiple requests were made by Trump's protective detail and by Trump's campaign team to the Secret Service for additional resources. I'm told that those were denied. And as I recall, the Secret Service spokesperson initially denied that such requests were made and denied. Why not tell the truth from the outset? What were they trying to do there? So, Senator, I don't think there was a, any intention to, mis, to mislead. Uh, it seems I, like a pretty material fact, doesn't it? I, I, I you, saw that report. Go ahead, Senator. Will you commit to me that you will submit to us in writing uh, what requests were made by whom uh, and to whom and when they were denied? I, I will, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> look, at the end of the day, uh, we, we're looking at a situation in which, um, at a minimum, People knew that this guy had a gun at least two minutes before the shooting happened. I want to know what you can tell me about what happened during that final two minute period where a whole bunch of people in the crowd saw and were shouting, he's got a gun. During that two minute period, perhaps at the beginning of it, the local police started to climb the rooftop and there was at least 30 seconds after which local police were able to personally observe the shooter with a gun, had the gun pointed at him. What happened during that time period and why on earth was President Trump not removed from the stage at that moment? So again, Senator, I, I'll, the reason why Senator Trump, uh, President Trump was not removed uh, was again, we did not have anything more than locals working an issue at the three o'clock, wasn't determined as to whether or not it was the same individual or not. And there was no report. Of the same weapon. individual as what? the same suspicious individual. Right, was... but we, we, we've left the category of suspicious individual at that point. You've got a guy with a gun on a rooftop 136 yards away from the stage. You know that he's got a gun at that point. What happened during that time period that did not result in President Trump, his protective detail being notified of that and him immediately being removed from the situation? Senator, what I will say, and then I'll, I'll uh, turn it over to Deputy Director of Bate no information regarding a weapon on the roof was ever passed to our personnel. How is that even possible? Do you want to comment to that? Senator, uh, again, I believe that information, um, and this is probably something my colleague can, can expound on, uh, information that was in law enforcement, local law enforcement channels, but did not cross over and make it to Secret Service awareness. Senator, just to clarify the timeline, so um, the individual was first seen by law enforcement on the roof at about 6.08. Uh, we're still working to perfect the timeline based on the radio comms and all that. It wasn't until um, at 6.11.03 6 seconds, the officer saw him and called out his arm. That was the first sighting where he had the rifle on the roof, and then he and that was relayed to the Secret Service Command Center at that My point. understanding is no, Secret Service, it was not relayed uh, to them. It's a narrower time frame, though. It's probably about uh, maybe up to half a minute between the time he's seen with the rifle and when the shots are fired. But there's still time. At that point, if there were an open channel of communication in which they were able to tell him, he's got a gun, take him out. You could still take President Trump off the stage. You could have him duck you could have the shooter neutralized. Do you, do you not have a channel of communication by which they can say, gun, take him out? So again, Senator, that information stayed and stayed in local channels and did not make it over to Secret Service. Did they service. not consider that relevant? You're, you're, saying saying that the state, the, you're saying that the local police didn't consider that relevant enough to pass along to the Secret Service? Sir, I think that they were in the midst of dealing with a very critical situation and they articulated that over the radio, as I understand it. However, 
it was never relayed over to us. Thank you, Senator Lee. Uh, Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Director Rowe, can you put your first poster, your first demonstrative back up? Please put A up, please. Let's make sure everybody can see it. This is the photograph, I believe, that you took, your team took of the roof, the AGR roof. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so from this vantage point, as, as the law enforcement who are in those windows, as they look left, they should be able to see the shooter clearly there on the AGR second floor roof. My question is, why is there not a Secret Service counter sniper on that roof? So, Senator Weir, um, when we post up, our, our, is, our methodology is to look out, look at things that can see in on our protectees. Uh, so that they can provide that coverage. But wh wh why is there not a, a Secret Service counter sniper there with clear line of sight? That roof has a clear line of sight to the former president. Why didn't you put a Secret Service counter sniper there? Uh, the Secret Service's counter sniper role is to neutralize those threats that are looking in on us uh, from where the protectee is, not necessarily uh, You think maybe position. you might want to revise that protocol in light of what happened here? Uh, they were protecting the principal, and I think in the principal the, got shot. I understand that, sir. So do you and, think you might want to revise the protocol? Let me ask you this. Who is the lead site agent who made the decision to leave the AGR building completely outside of the security perimeter? Who was that? Senator, I cannot give you that name. This person is operational. They're still doing investigations. They're still doing protective visits. Have they been relieved of duty? Senator, uh, they have not I know been relieved their name, of by duty. The way. Why have they not been relieved of duty? They are still cooperating, not only being interviewed by the FBI, but also by our Office of Professional Responsibility. And uh, we will let the facts of uh, the mission assurance and any further investigations play out. Is it, isn't the fact that a former president was shot, that a good American is dead, that other Americans were critically wounded, isn't that enough mission failure for you to say that the person who decided that that building should not be in the security perimeter probably ought to be stepped down? Senator, I think you're using the word decided, and I think we need to allow the the investigation play out to include. Who, okay, so who did who, who did make the decision then? If it wasn't the lead uh, site agent who made the decision, not to put that in the security perimeter. Senator, you're zeroing in on one particular agent. I want to find out exactly yeah. what was the entire decision process. So I think yeah. I want to be neutral and make sure that we get to the bottom of it and interview everybody in order to determine if there was more than one person who perhaps exercised bad judgment. Well, sure. My question is, why don't you relieve everybody of duty who made bad judgment? So yeah, you're right, I am zeroing in on somebody. I'm trying to find somebody who's accountable here. And we so will. you're telling me that the person who made the decision not to include this in the perimeter has not been relieved of duty. What about the person who's in charge of the interoperability of radio frequencies between local law enforcement and, and Secret Service? Has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, Senator, because interoperability is a challenge, uh, is a greater challenge than just one person. On that day, we had a counterpart system uh, it failed As the person who decided, who made the decision to send Donald Trump onto stage knowing that you had a security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? No, sir, they haven't. Because... As the person who decided not to pull the former president off of stage when you knew that, in your words, the locals were working a serious security situation, has that person been relieved of duty? Uh, no, sir. Again, I refer you back to my original answer that we are investigating this through a mission assurance and as opposed to zeroing in on one, what more do you or need to investigate to know to exactly what the decision making process was? What more do you need to investigate was? to know that there were critical enough failures that some individuals ought to be held accountable? I mean, what more do you need to know? What I need to know is exactly what happened, and I need my investigators to do their job. And I cannot. A lot of people didn't do I their cannot jobs. put my thumb on the scale. Otherwise, what do you mean? Put your thumb the on the objective. Scale? The obje you're asking me, Senator, to completely make a rush to judgment about somebody failing. I acknowledge this was a failure of the Is Secret Service. Is it not prima facie that somebody has failed? A former president was sir, shot. Sir, this could have been our Texas School Book Depository. I have lost sleep over that for the last 17 days, then just like you have. Somebody to and hold I will tell you, Senator, I will tell you, Senator, that I will not rush to judgment, that people will be held accountable, and I will do so with integrity 
and not rush to judgment and put people I can't unfairly believe that you persecuted. Are, I, unfairly persecuted? Unfairly, we people sir. Who are we dead. have to be able to have a proper investigation into this, Senator. You said earlier that you've got to make sure that your protocols are followed, and unless there's a protocol violation, people wouldn't be disciplined. I would just say to you, I don't really care that much about your protocols. I think if your protocols don't provide for the fact that when a former president is shot, when an American is killed, when other rally goers, innocent people who just showed up on the day when they are shot at and critically wounded, if that isn't a protocol violation, prima facie, you should revise your protocols. Senator, I think this is where you and I agree. This was a failure and we will get to the bottom of it. Well, I hope you're gonna do something about it. Let me ask you something else. The Real Clear Politics reports this morning that you were directly involved in denying additional security resources and personnel, including counter snipers, not just to this event, but over the last two years that President Trump's, President Trump's team repeatedly asked for these additional resources and you personally were involved in denying them. Is, is that true? Senator, as I stated earlier, that is not true. So you never denied any resources to former President Trump's team? Uh, no, not me, no, and, sir. And you, weren't, and you weren't involved in any of that? You no, were never sir, involved in the decision making? No, sir, I was not. Let, let me ask you just one or two other things here quickly. Well, whistleblowers tell me that, in fact, law enforcement were stationed to be on that roof and that law enforcement abandoned their post because it was too hot. Is that accurate? Senator, I have heard that as well. Uh, again, uh, they posted up inside. And I think moving forward, as I as I said earlier, we're going to ensure that state and local counter snipers are on roofs. But but do you do you know if someone was supposed to be on the roof? Do you know if someone was in fact? That's what the whistleblower tells me. That may or may not be accurate. Do you know that to be the fact? Was somebody posted to the roof, local law enforcement or whomever? Uh, I do not know that to be a fact. Well, can I ask you why you don't know that? Again, Senator, don't we are looking at this, and they should have been on that roof. And the fact that they were in the building is something that I'm still trying to uh, uh, understand. I just want to express my frustration, Director, that 17 days or whatever it's been, that, you, that whistleblowers are telling us more than you are, and you don't know, you haven't ascertained if there was supposed to be law enforcement on the roof. That seems like a pretty basic fact. I'm also told that local law enforcement suppliers offered the Secret Service drones, and you declined them. Is that true? So, Senator, uh, one, I've been very transparent and forthcoming. Uh, there Your agency was, has not been transparent and forth, forthcoming, so please, but let's not go there. I have been forthcoming, sir. You've been, well, that remains to be seen. You've been on the job a few days. So far, you've fired nobody. Now, the drones. Thank you, yes, Were sir. you offered drones? Senator Hall. So there was an offer to fly a drone on that day. And why did you deny it? Uh, again, uh, I think the ability of local law enforcement to provide an asset, we probably should have taken them up on it if we if it was offered.